Hey, this is Faye, and today we're back at the library. The Great Google Library Hard is, as the ingenious name might tip you off, the hard version of the dungeon of the very same name. Everything here is kind of rammed up, the mobs are rammed up, the mess is rammed up, the books are all over the place, and boss fights are phenomenal. But out of all of these books, the Warrior of Light somehow manages to stumble upon a few gems that, I don't know, they, I guess they just kind of call out to them. Um, so we're going to walk through some of these gems and some of these lore bits are informative, some of them are interesting and some of them are just really bonkers. Standard disclaimer applies. I am not an English native speaker. I have a strange accent, lots of big words and me speak all the big words. Yes, yes. And with that out of the way, kick back, relax, put your feet up and enjoy the reading of the lost lore of the Great Google Library. Enjoy! The Boy and the Dragon Gay Once upon a time, there lived a free-spirited boy who loved to play in the forest with his pet Chocobo. But the forest were fraught with peril, and one day a band of brigands ambushed the boy, spiriting him away to the harsh mountains of the north. Yet there be dragons there, and as they rode up on the mountain path, one of those majestic beasts came swooping down from the heavens. The boy's chocobo reared in fright, sending the boy tumbling down the mountainside to his nigh-certain demise. And yet the god saw fit to spare his life, if only meagerly so. As he lay there, battered and broken, all manner of foul beasts drew near, threatening to rip him limb from limb. Just as the boy was making his peace with the twelve, Another dragon appeared, a smaller creature, yes, but even a small dragon is a fearsome opponent indeed. It was then that the strangest thing happened. With a mighty roar, the dragon turned upon the circling beasts and spit forth a burst of flames that reduced them to so much ash, saving the poor boy's life. With what half seemed a smile, the dragon approached the wounded child and gently raised him up to sit upon his back, and the two flew off to the gods know where. For this next one, I will try real hard not to laugh. I've taken several takes of it. It's one of my favorites. It's really, it, it's, it's a good one. <clears throat> Of love's unrequited. Oh, but why must the gods curse me so? By what cruel trick of fate was I given this oversized, ungainly body and sent into this world where you abide? My princess, my goddess, my everything. Your delicate hands, your shapely head, your dark eyes, in which I would lose myself and never return. Yes, every aspect of your being strikes me to depths of the heart that I knew not I had until the day you first appear before me. And yet, I am a Rokadin. Could one of your kind ever love a lumbering brute such as me? Good sense tells me the answer is no. But my heart, nay, my very soul, will not accept it. For bereft of your company, I fear I will wither away into a wretched husk of what was once a man. Oh, have mercy on this poor soul, my goddess. Pray grace me with your presence when next your travels call you to Limsa. My beloved Bray Flux, to say the words, I am yours forever. <laughs> a 
Over the Horizon Redux. It is widely known that the Mamulja boast one of the most impressive indigenous societies to be found on the New World. It would be a mistake, however, to view the Mamulja as a single uniform people. A careful analysis of documents brought back by explorers reveals that the Mamulja are more accurately described as a federation or alliance of numerous distantly related tribes, each with distinguishing physical characteristics. The brown-scaled Hubigo with their distinctively long combs, the large-eyed blue-scaled Bunua and the mottled Dopro. It is further said that although Mamulja rarely marry outside their own tribes, such union do occur on the occasion of certain religious observances and are known to produce two-headed offspring that are hailed as blessed siblings and groomed to be warlords from a young age. Indeed, the Ortak, ruler of all Mamulja kind, is known to be one of them. On the culinary application of goblins. From mutton to moral, oyster to oravon, eel to eft, Eosia does not want for delicious and delightful ingredients to stimulate the senses of any culinarian. And yet, how is it that we came to know that the flesh of these creatures would pleasure our palate so? The answer is self-evident. For every familiar ingredient, someone, at some point in our history, first took it upon him or herself to eat it. And yet, this answer raises another question. What wondrous flavors and textures remains undiscovered? just waiting for a brave soul to discover them. And so it was that I took it upon myself to investigate the culinary suitability of coplin flesh. Why coplin, you ask? To which I say, good reader, why not coplins? The above passage was composed by my elder brother. Sadly, they were the last words he ever wrote, for, as he soon discovered, goblin feelers are poisonous. Armed with this knowledge and vowing that his sacrifice would not go to waste, I resolved to carry on his life's work. Proceedings of the Council of Magi Proceedings of the 284th Convocation of the Amdapuri Council of Magi A vote was called to settle on a name for a potent and newly fashioned healing spell. Being that said healing spell was an augmentation of Kuraga, erst the most potent healing spell, the following names were proposed by the council. Kurago, Kurasa, Kuraja, Kuragura. Finding the aforewritten names duly lacking in gravity and the existing hierarchy of spell names needlessly obtuse, the council did vote by a margin of 17 to 3 to do away with existing naming conventions entirely and adopt a new system of numerical spell names as writ below to be used henceforth. Cure 1, Cure 2, Cure 3, Cure 4. It is recorded. The Boy and the Dragon Gay A Literary Analysis Many scholars believe that the popular children's tale of the boy and the dragon gay is, in fact, 
an adaptation of an older Ishgardian myth, one telling of which is transcribed below for the reader's reference. In a bleak village on the outskirts of Curthus, there lived a shepherd boy, poor but kind of heart. One day a band of ruffians came and spirited the boy away, seeking to deliver him to a slave trader in hopes of earning some coin. No sooner had they left the village than they were set upon by a great dragon. Down from the heavens it swooped, tearing the black guards limb from limb and charring their carcasses with hell's fire. But it was no mere chance that the great worm had found them, no. The boy had befriended the great worm some time ago, and it had sensed the danger to its dear friend. Alas, in the chaos, the boy had tumbled from the mountains and lay half dying at the base of the cliff. Seeing its dear friend lying there, battered and beaten, the dragon gave on to the child of its blood. So it was that the boy took to the skies as the worm's minion, flying off to only the gods know where. I hope you like these lore bits. I'll admit that I've been looking quite forward to reading them to you. Uh, they are amongst my favorites and out of all of the lost lore in the game, I think that these stand as some of the best little nuggets that they put in there. And I feel that, in general, the library hard nailed the balance between insane, entertaining, interesting and informative. Also, a great many thanks goes out to the awesome people here who helped me get video from this. And you guys are awesome. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it entertaining or relaxing or informative or none of the above. In which case, I am really impressed that you made it to this part of the video. Like, that that takes dedication. Or maybe, you know, it was just an autoplay and it's out of your reach. And then in, in which case, hey, congratulations to making it so far. Um, if anybody has any really good suggestions for types of lore, that I could look into or that you would like me to read aloud so that you don't have to, uh, give me a poke. I am always up for suggestions. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a really lovely day. Bye!